Hi, Prayer Valley. How are you? Hello, everyone. I'm going to see if we're live. Well, we are live, but let's just see if... Oh, Hello, yeah. Everyone. There we are. <laughs> Can you hear it good? Testing, testing. Can you guys hear us? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yep, you can hear it good. Okay, okay. sorry. Very good. All right. How are yeah. you guys? I hope you guys are having an awesome Thursday. I had a great Thursday. Um, wish I could see your guys' face. but I don't. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I can't. And yeah. that's so unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm just killing a little time. Oh, look at it. I got to sip together. Mine's just water. Okay. Um, I have a few announcements um, to get to you guys. Um, the lighting on my phone keeps messing up, so it keeps going, like, really white yeah. and then dim. It's okay. It, it's You guys just know I'm just really this white, so... <laughs> I glow. How about that? I have a few announcements for you guys. Um, outreach in the Valley is going to be February 19th. That's this Saturday at 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Um, at the church. So the church address is 14172 Avon Avenue, Lathrop. Somebody can type that in the comments so you guys yeah, can. Yeah, get with Sister Desiree. See if there's anything that she's needing. I know she's had some people even from her work bringing donations like things they've picked up from Costco and whatnot just anything little thing will help so get with uh, sister Desiree yeah uh, message her comment her text her um, if you can make it uh, that would be great if you can't see what you can do to help it out um, also um, that's this Saturday at 1 there is a men's conference coming up it's called the altar um, it's April 8th and 9th. Um, there is, there's a link in the Men of, Men of the Valley uh, group page. There's a link in there. But I think you can go to um, thealtar.com. Like, you can Google it. And yeah, it'll tell you. Just you. look it up, like, the Altar uh, Men's Conference. It's in Vegas, right? It's in Las Vegas. And it'll tell you more information. You can also get with, like, Brother Dan or um, Pastor Mike or Pastor, you could talk to them and ask them like, hey, what do I need to do? I know you need to buy your tickets. Oh, I know you do need to buy your tickets. Thanks, um, Mich thanks Michelle Han. We <laughs> yeah, love you. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> um, and rooms, it's like, it's like a couple days, so you'll have to get a room. Um, and you got to like prepare all that. So yeah, just that's April 8th and 9th. Um, I know a lot of men are going and I know they're super excited and I'm excited. And I sometimes think maybe I could just like put my hair in a ball cap and draw well, there's a mustache. A, there's a woman's just, one coming up. You don't say. I do. Oh my I goodness. Do. I don't even need to go to that because there's a women's conference coming up. Not in Las Vegas, but it's in Oroville. So that's exciting. Um, it's May 19th through the 21st. Um, May 19th through the 21st. Did I say that? I don't know. I think I said May 19th through the 21st. Yes. Yeah. May 19th through the 21st. Um, speak to Pastor Beth. She has all the information, more information. You could comment below, message us. Whatever your form of getting information is, do it so you can find out. Um, you have the dates. I just gave them to you. But you can find out, like, where do you want to stay when you go there? Um, what's all the timing and all of that? And she has all the information. So get with her on Sunday or shoot her a text. Or you can email us. You can get all of this information on prayervalleyfamily.com. You can go on there and you can watch live. Uh, you can't watch live. You can watch past live. One day we are going to stream live from our website. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. But right now, you know, Facebook Live and check us later out on YouTube. And But you can get all the information on prayervalleyfamily.com, watch past services. And that is most of the announcements. That's all of the announcements. That's all the announcements I have for this evening. So 
let's get in to what we're going to talk about. I think we're going to be talking about peace. 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 <laughs> because we all need it. We all need peace. <clears throat> you know who gives it? The, the G- Lord. The G-O-D. Mm-hmm. God. <laughs> he gives yeah. it. So how many of you like start the new year... You know, just having those New Year resolutions. I know we're way past New Year's, but I had my dad. I had Pastor Ron buy me a Bible study um, for Christmas. And then I was like, oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to do it. And I really was. I was really excited to get into it. So it's like the Old Testament and the New Testament. And I'm in the I'm in the Old Testament right now. Um, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. And so I've been writing down like scriptures that that I like or that I feel like mm, this is significant it's all significant yeah. okay but you know like you have those scriptures that you're just like ooh, I'm gonna write that down like ooh, you know that's really gotten in my yeah. spirit there. so this time you know I've started reading the Bible lots of times but this time I like really have been prayerful and I'm like you know what I'm not just gonna write those down and leave them on a paper I'm gonna go back and look at those scriptures and really like read them again and That's good. read the chapter with yeah. them not just reading that one scripture but reading the scripture before the verse before and the verse after so i found a verse and i went back to it and the verse that i'm speaking on right now and i'm not even speaking she's speaking i'm just going to Better give a not little be a verse that <clears throat> i wrote down it's just gonna be a little tidbit so i um it's not even the mm. verse i wrote down oh. isn't that funny how do you want me to pull it up that yeah well in a little bit i will yes okay so i wrote down the scriptures um so i ended up reading the whole chapter of genesis 26 and i just like read it and the and the verse that i wrote down wasn't even the one i'm speaking on tonight it is um it uh it talks about like isaac so what i read in genesis 26 it talks about isaac him growing up him becoming great him living in, you know, the the oath that God um, gave to Abraham. He's living in it. You know, he's living under that covenant that um, God promised Abraham. So one of the verses, it talks about um, Isaac opening the wells that his father Abraham had dug. Um, and after Abraham died, the... Um, the wells they were stopped up by their by their enemies so they're um the philistines they're the ones who actually uh stopped up the wells they blocked the wells so they couldn't be used and um it says uh he reopened the wells his father had dug which the philistines had filled in after abraham's death isaac also restored the names abraham had given them so literally i just paraphrased it and then i just read it so i honestly just memorized that whole scripture that's just great um it got in your spirit it did get in my spirit so you know it's it's uh on your heart it was on my heart so isaac who opened the wells and caused them to flow again um his Mm -hmm. name means i'm sure everyone knows what his name means his name means one who laughs or one who rejoices um so i believe that laughter and joy and peace and the holy spirit will open up the deep wells that are inside of us um some of us have you know um wells that may have been stopped up by the enemy through depression or uh, disappointment um they've been stopped up by fear yeah uh, shame guilt anxiety yeah um whatever it may be i believe that Mm -hmm. the joy of the lord can remove what has stopped it up yeah um and we have to meditate on him and be determined to praise him in every situation um he's a god of love and joy and peace so you you just have to let his joy bubble up inside of you and, and he'll remove what the enemy meant to stop yeah you know like uh the philistines they stopped <clears throat> the well up they weren't able to be used at all and he dug them right up when i, I mm-hmm. picture isaac just with his little hands just digging those okay. wells right on up sure um but you know i just thought it was kind of cool because like his name is and he you know he was probably joyful 
you know, because he, he lived under that covenant, you know, like that, that the Lord, the Lord had promised Abraham that his descendant, descendants would live, you know, in a prosperous land and that he would, and even when uh, Isaac had to like move, because he was in, um, I think, Gerar, I don't know how you pronounce that. He was in a land and then he, you know, grew up and he was, um, he acquired a lot of wealth. He was, had a lot of favor. Yeah. And they were like, you need to move on because you're greater than we are and we don't like that. <laughs> and so he even left then and he kind of moved to like the outskirts of so people tell me in worship. <sighs> yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he moved to the outskirts and that's when he <laughs> dug up the, uh, his father's wells. <clears throat> but he even in then he wasn't like oh i gotta move and and you know blah, 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 blah. no he was probably like it's okay god i know that you have my back yeah. i know that um i consider it all joy because i know that you're gonna make where you make room for me before you're gonna make room for me again so i just thought that was something that was that's really spoke to me yeah that we have to have peace amen and joy yeah it's really good. So, touching on that, I wanted to talk about peace. Also, pray for me, guys. Pray for your friends that have allergies. The almond blossom orchards have bloomed, and I've been blowing my nose all day. Yeah. <laughs> a little TMI, but if I start sneezing and you or coughing, <coughs> have allergies. That's right now. what it is right now. <laughs> you better not even sneeze in that store. No. Nope. Or else. Nope. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about peace. The peace that God gives. Um, John 14, 27 goes, My peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Um, There's two kinds of peace. That's what that scripture is saying. It's saying that there's a peace from God and there's a peace of Of this world. world, Right? Um, Well, well, now you know, if you didn't know. Yeah, now you know. (laughs) Um, that's why, you know, one of the things I always pray when I pray for people is I always pray for the peace of God. I, I say, you know, not the peace of this world, but the peace of God. And if you've known the peace of God, you know the difference. <laughs> Trust me, you know the difference. You know, when you're at that altar and you're just in his presence, you just feel. You feel completely different. It's an amazing experience. If you haven't felt it, go to the altar Sunday. You'll feel it. Um, at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. At Prayer Valley, 14172 Avon Ave. Wow. Hashtag ad. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, back to it. Uh, Philippians 4, 7 says, Which God's peace surpasses all understanding. That even though there can be turmoil and that you can go through trials, tribulations, that you can still find peace. Um, like... I was reading this story where this guy was talking about how there was this huge storm happening in the ocean and these waves were coming and it was, you know, it was just huge. You know, you've seen those videos like the Poseidon and t- uh, Titanic. Well, the Titanic wasn't a storm. Mm, but it was sad. Yeah, RIP. Um, but it says not even a hundred feet deep, it's calm, that there's no storm not even a ripple and that is the peace that God can give that even though all around you there can be a storm but you can have peace you can have that calmness because God's peace transcends circumstances and surpasses understanding so even though there is a storm around and people are like I don't know why you have peace yeah it's because it surpasses our understanding right It's pretty simple and basic, but sometimes it still blows my mind. It does blow my mind. But back to John 4... I'm going to take a sip. Hold on. Okay. John... Back to John 14, 27. It says, after... And after he says, peace, I leave with you. He says, do not let your heart be troubled. Do not be afraid. So there's two things I got from that scripture, too. It says, the peace is given to us. Peace is given to us from God, right? But it also says, second is he states let. He says the word let. Do not let your heart be troubled. Meaning that we 
allow or permit our peace to be troubled. It says sometimes we get in our circumstances, we get our eyes on the troubles, we, we get scared, stressed, anxious, right? In those times, we lay down our peace. Mm. We willingly concede it, abandon it, which I'll be honest, I have done. I do Every it. time I get stressed or I get um, anxiety, you know, um, I lose focus, Yeah. right? We, and we all have day-to-day -day stresses. I know that um, I work in a high-stress job, so I have to have peace all the time. Yes. Um, I'm always in the Word, always in the Word. And I, I have children, so oh. I have to have peace all the time as well. Mm, that's true. That's mm -hmm. true. I've been around her children. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, um, but it's true because, remember, God gave us His peace. Peace from God cannot be taken away. We have to surrender it. So, and as such, we are the only ones who can take it back, pick it up, or, you know, pick it up after we drop it, you know? Um, but just think about that. We surrender our peace when we are, we are troubled or we keep our eyes on the world and on the chaos instead of on God. We're letting go of our peace. But why? Why are we doing that? We need to keep our eyes on God. We yeah. lose focus. We lose focus, right? When I have anxiety and I'm stressed, I willingly let my peace go. I lose focus. But we have to focus. We have to pray. Yeah. We have to be in our word. You know, what does it say? God never leaves us nor forsakes us, right? Um, we don't have to sink beneath or become defeated by our troubles. We can face, confront, and challenge and deal with it all with God. In the end, we overcome them by the power of the cross. You know, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, that you hold tight to that peace that God gives, confident that what he says and, and that he's watching and he's directing and he's caring for those and trusting in us and, and he believes in us. But, you know, peace and faith, they go hand in hand. You must have faith. faith. You know, um, faith in God, faith in his word. You know, when you, when you seek his word, you can find the true peace. The true yes. peace that's not of this world. Yeah. The same book, going back to John, um, John 16, 33, Jesus goes on to say, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome this world. Oh, I love that scripture so much. I know we all need peace. I do. All the time. All the time. And especially in these times that we're in. Yeah, I'm going there. These times, yes. right? These times. These times. These times. We cannot be shaken. We can't. We're on a firm foundation. You need to remember that. So when, you, when we let anxiety, let, like I said, we allow we allow it, the stress to come, right? Remember, you're taught, okay, hold on, this is good. It says your thought life affects your peace. Mm, that's so true. Your, your thought life affects your peace, how you're thinking. That's when it says, um, that's why God's words calls us to, to the renewal of our minds, right? Mm -hmm. So going back to that, when we have anxiety and stress, we take, we start thinking, yes. we start letting ourselves think these things. That's why we have to take captive these thoughts, you know, take captive of the stress, the anxiety, the anger. Yeah. We have to, um, because if you don't, if you don't take captive right then when it shows up, then it just like snowballs. What does it do? It takes root. Yeah. It takes root and starts to grow. Just Keep thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. Overthinking. Yeah. I do it. I know I need to. I In the mornings on my way to work, I just found like, I don't want to think about work right now. But then I start thinking all the stuff I have to do, all the stuff. And I just got to take a breath. And I, you know what I do every morning now? I pray to God. Yes. I pray every morning on my way to work. And I just ask for God's peace. Yeah. Ask for his peace. And I don't let myself be troubled. Yeah. You know? Um. So, like I said, don't let it take root. Um, 
where did it say? Uh, Romans 12, 2. And it says, avoid being conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you take hold of these thoughts, you're guarding your mind. You're guarding yourself from the enemy. You're guarding yourself from your flesh who wants to rise up. So when you guard your mind, you guard your peace. You're not surrendering it. So when it says, don't be troubled, don't be anxious. You know, I go back to uh, Matthew 6, 25 and 26. It says, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your, your body. Is not life more than food? Is your body not more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap. And let your heavenly Father feed them. Are you not of more value than that? Right? Do I need to say more? Sparrows not worry about tomorrow. I like that song. <laughs> um, there's nothing about circumstance that automatically that creates anxiety. Not nothing. Anxiety occurs, occurs because of the way we let ourselves respond to it. Mm -hmm. You let yourself. There it goes again. How we respond to it. So when you have a troubling problem, you have the ability to choose peace or, or chaos. Or, yeah, peace or chaos. Peace or chaos. You can choose. You know, uh, that's how God gave us free will, right? So we can choose. But when you choose that, you know, that just remember that it is God's purpose for you to not be troubled and not be anxious. It's his purpose for you to be, have a peaceful life. Yes. Right? Yes, there's trials. <clears throat> yes, there's, there's tribulations. tribulations right but and the father may allow a situation for you to develop stronger faith yeah to grow maybe to mature, mature right but god doesn't set you up for anxiety he doesn't set you up to have stress god wants you to have his peace that's why he gave it to us we go back to the beginning he says peace i give to you you know i give to you that's what the lord said god is always at work always at work to let you have peace you know when you when you fully trust him when you walk in faith walk in his word you will find his peace he has it there um i i've really been delving delving into this piece um and i'm on a bible study too by um dr charles f stanley and it's very good he's a, a very powerful man of god um in this Bible study, he told a story where he went to Israel and he was out at the, in the Sea of Galilee. And he said he has never felt peace like he felt in that sea at that moment. He said that was the most like beyond anything he's ever felt. And the people that were with him or around him weren't, were thinking, oh, no, this isn't peaceful because not even a few miles away was Syria and Lebanon. And so they were like, mm. and, and people, you know, they think, oh, Israel's not, when they think of it, they're not, oh, that's not a very peaceful place right yeah. there, you know, or uh, it's a hot spot. Conflict. But, you know, pa the pastor, Charles F. Stanley, he said he felt peace, he said, because he felt the Lord there. Wow. So just think about that. If you have the presence of God, you feel peace. It doesn't matter where you are doesn't matter where you are. Jesus is your source of peace. That's right. Peace I give to you, the Lord said. Not of this world, right? So just remember that our minds set on God, our focus set on God. We don't look to the chaos or anything around us. And we get to take hold of those captive thoughts. We can't, sh sh you know, get into our feelings, yeah. On it, because that's what I think of when I think of anxieties. I get into these thoughts and yeah. these feelings. Oh, I'm feeling this way. Yeah. We don't go by our feelings. No. We go by the word of God. That's right. And it's faithful and it's true and it's firm and it's never failing. And that's what I wanted to share tonight with you guys, you know, because um, that's just something that really stuck with me. And I was like, yeah. wow. That so one. You, you yeah. sent it to me a couple weeks oh, ago. I did. Because so. I get anxious a lot. Yeah. Um, and she sends me things sometimes yeah. and 
it uh well yeah that. i sent you that and i was because I, I was, like, I was oh my god i was so shook by it i was like <laughs> when I he was said like, oh i chose this the peace we surrender we surrender yeah. our peace yeah. When we let anxiety I was and surrendering my peace and I was letting anxiety and it was tormenting me. Yeah. It's a torment. It is. It's a spirit. And it was tormenting me and I was just letting it. It gets your eyes off God. Rather than getting my eyes on the word. And I've seen him do it over and over again. Yeah. I, he's always faithful. He never fails me. Never failed me. Yeah. But yet I was putting my eyes on my circumstance. Rather than believing what I know is true, yeah, and that's really that still just gets to me. I can't, I can't even. I'm still in the in the the word about that, and I'm still de like delving into more and more of it. But just now that I know, when I am anxious or have stress, I gotta take captive of those thoughts and just yeah. start praying right then and there. Yes, you know. Um, so that way I can have his peace. I can have his joy. And that he didn't set me up to have anxiety, you know, or stress. It's or depression. Or depression. Or, or fear. Or, or fear. Or shame. Or, or anger. Or disappointment. Or guilt. Or shame, you know. Yeah. You know, we're not set up that way. But we let ourselves do that. Yes. So let's keep our minds on God. Let's, let's keep our prayer life full and let's keep ourselves in the word of God. Meditate yeah. on him. Yeah. Um, keep your eyes on him. Don't lose focus. Don't lose. Don't look to the world. Don't look for the world's peace. It's, it's not going to help you. It's fleeting. The world's peace is fleeting. It will yeah. not satisfy you. It won't. It will be here today and gone tomorrow. But you know what? God's word's everlasting. God's word's everlasting. That's right. Right? So uh, I think that, that's all I have. Yeah. We love you guys. Stay encouraged. Um, have a good Thursday. Rest of your evening. Have a good Friday, Saturday. Yeah. And I will see you on Sunday. Can't wait to worship. I'm so excited. Um, I was so blessed last Sunday. Pastor Tony Rojas brought, brought an awesome word. I was super blessed. Such a good word. Oh, um, man, we're going to have some revival up in the uh, Prayer Valley. Yeah. We're just shifting gears. We're going higher, wider, and deeper. I'm just so excited. I'm excited, too. And I'll see you guys here, there, or, or in, in the, the air. air. Bye.